dear students in this class we're going to discuss about the rise of modern science and specifically the contributions made by one of the greatest scientists of the world that is sir isaac newton so regarding this growth of modern science in the 17th century uh, there are certain factors that you should know and let me tell you that the 17th century on a whole was not hostile to science there was a a uh, temperament that was favorable to the growth of science in the 17th century now uh, you have to also know that science or otherwise which is uh, called as natural philosophy became an organized activity it became an organized discipline and also a human activity that became widespread so it became an organized discipline and also its reach was much more greater in this period now it was during the 17th century that a number of scientific academies um, came up in various parts of england and europe uh, for example the royal society of london these were forums where scientists could come together they could discuss their findings they could debate over it so there was a um, this was a trend which favored discussion of science which led to the growth of science generally you can say that there was a, a community an international scientific community that spoke about science and also among the aristocrats of england it was considered to be something very fashionable to discuss science so these are the general features of science uh, in the uh, 17th century and so generally you have to know that the temperament was in favor of the growth of science that means this religious spirit declined as you can see in the slide the scientific spirit dominated uh, everything was um, discussed in a method that was known as scientific method a scientific method means when you believe in things only after conducting experiments okay experimentation observation uh, generalization and conclusion and that is what is known as scientific method so this method was um, uh, you know this method was utilized in uh, in almost all realms in this particular area and at the same time uh, there was a decline of religious spirit when people were uh, ready to give up conservatism they were ready to uh get wedded to progress and modernity that is how we can say that the ardent religious spirit of the earlier centuries declined in this particular century now let us see which were the major academias that were founded in this particular century the royal society for improving natural knowledge 1662 england uh, academic Uh, this science of 1666 France then journals were founded out American Philosophical Society at Philadelphia so such societies were founded then you also have to know that uh, in this slide you can see how uh, in this century astronomy and physics particularly mechanics gained a lot of attention astronomy and physics then now here from this slide onwards i will discuss on the important contributors scientists as you can call them uh, evangelista torricelli <clears throat> he invented the barometer okay you must have studied then uh, he also you know, worked a lot which later helped isaac newton and the others to develop calculus as such so uh, you can see torricelli uh, founded the barometer he contributed to the development of calculus and also in the field of optics <clears throat> now next is blaise pascal so pascal um, was another important scientist who contributed to applied sciences uh, now he can see that uh, we can see that he worked mainly on concepts of pressure and vacuum which Torricelli whose predecessor had worked so um, that was how he continued the work of Torricelli then Pascal also wrote in defense of a scientific method about which i told now the method that gave importance to experimentation observation uh, generalization and conclusion that means you are not leaving everything to your logical reason but you are experimenting uh, things out you are observing and then on the basis of uh, all these observation you are entering into conclusion and finally formula as uh, are uh, made so that is what is known as scientific method 
Then uh, regarding another uh, philosopher of the period uh, who contributed to science, geography, sorry, geometry too, that was uh, René Descartes, geometry. Okay, um, he contributed to analytical geometry and like all of us know the use of graph. Uh, the Cartesian coordinates, X and Y coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates which uh, are familiar with, I, with all of you, I'm sure. So this was the contribution made by René Descartes. <coughs> he was a great philosopher also. The next one, you have the case of Robert Boyle. So Robert Boyle was a philosopher, a chemist, physicist and an inventor. He is, can be considered as, what to say, um, one of the first modern chemists, that is Robert Boyle. Then he also continued with the scientific method. Then he, uh, he worked a lot, a lot regarding uh, the laws related to pressure. So he said how when kept under a constant temperature, um, he explained Boyle's law that way that when kept, kept under constant temperature, the inverse, inversely proportional relationship between the absolute pressure and the volume of gas. Okay, inversely proportional relationship between the absolute pressure and the volume of ga gas. But the condition is that the temperature should be constant and that is Boyle's law. Now here, uh, since uh, your syllabus makers want uh, more to be discussed on Isaac Newton, I have this image for you. And uh, let us discuss a little bit about his personal life in this next slide. So Isaac Newton was born uh, at Grantham in England and he studied at Cambridge, Trinity College, uh, Cambridge. He became a professor at uh, 23, quite a, a young age and for more than 25 years he served as professor at mathematics. Then uh, his contributions uh, were mainly on the fundamental principles of mechanics and they were uh, laws of motion and laws of gravitation. Laws of motion, gravitation. Now, uh, he was an, <coughs> uh, not only a mathematician, he was a physicist, an astronomer, uh, and also a theologian. That means he studied theology. And uh, he, you can call him as an actual philosopher too. A scientist, a natural philosopher too. It was, it was in those days, um, rather than calling somebody a scientist, the term used was natural philosopher. Okay. Then he wrote the famous book, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematicia. Okay, which in short can be called Principia Mathematicia. That was in 1687 and it laid the foundation of mechanics. Then um, his other contributions were in the field of optics. Along with Leibniz, he developed the calculus. Then, uh, this was the period actually of scientific revolution and he can be considered as a key figure, a seminal figure of scientific revolution. Now, uh, he was very modest, though he contributed immensely to the realm of science, he was very modest because I have written a sentence here. Uh, he compared his discoveries to those of a child who, who, who gathered a few shells on the shores of a boundless ocean. Okay, that is how he compared his discoveries. Moreover, he uh, compliment, he complimented his predecessors by saying that it was uh, he could contribute so much because he stood on their shoulders. So he definitely did not want to take uh, the credit of all his findings. It, he gave the credit to his predecessors. So that is why we say that he was very modest. Now, <clears throat> regarding um, his Principia. Uh, we can see how he formulated the laws of motion and universal gravitation and this particular um, work in fact continued to rule the world of science until theory of relativity came up. Then uh, regarding optics we know like how uh, he produced a very sophisticated theory of color uh, that was based on observation and said that a prism separates white light into the colors of visible spectrum. A prism, when uh, light is passed through prism, a prism separates white light into the various colors. That is the colors of the visible spectrum that we see around and that is how um, uh, you can see how he has contributed to the field of optics. Okay, so that okay. Next we have uh, Linnaeus. He was a naturalist and he made the classification of 
plants and animals and also lay the uh, foundation of biological taxonomy. Then now we have Pierre Simon. He was a French scholar and a polymath. That means a person who was, uh, uh, um, what to say, who was good in various fields. So uh, he contributed to mathematics, statistics, astronomy, physics, etc. Uh, he also wrote the work Mechanic Celeste, otherwise known as Celestial Mechanics. Next we have uh, Joseph Black. He was a chemist mainly and he is known for the discoveries of magnesium, specific heat, carbon dioxide etc. Then Lavoisier, he was a chemist, Lavoisier was a chemist and at the same time you could see him contributing to the history of chemistry and uh, biology but then uh, generally he is known as the father of modern chemistry. Then Presley, Joseph Presley, he was a chemist again, a natural philosopher. Uh, he, the main found, the discovery was that uh, regarding water, that is water is composed of oxygen and hydrogen. That was his discovery. Then William Harvey, who made a lot of contribution in the field of human anatomy. Uh, so we could see uh, Harvey, in fact, uh, making a lot of findings about the circulation of blood that is how we remember how we even now now so, so these were the prominent scientists of the period of the 17th century Europe uh, you can say that these scientists were people who uh, contributed to scientific method they were sometimes uh, the forerunners of predecessors uh, they, they, they were the forerunners in their uh, own realm and you can say how their um, knowledge their work in fact helped to spread scientific information to the common people and this in fact helped common people to develop a better life, to lead a better life because uh, we could see that these people, these scientists with their contributions, they, con they in fact were able to control the forces of nature to a certain extent, making the lives of common people much more easier. So that is where we can see they are still remembered for their contribution in making the lives better uh, for improving the standard of common people. So that is how science has contributed to the development of humanity in totality. Okay, thank you.